Welcome back to The Middle Ground. I'm your host, Key, and we're reporting live from the Honey Queen Juice Bar. Welcome back to The Middle Ground. I'm your gracious host, Key, and these are my amazing guests. Let's get into today's topics. Okay, so let's jump right in. Let's talk about it, okay? A lot of times the discussion of sexual trauma is centered around young ladies. We often talk about how um, young girls are affected a lot of times by family, close family friends, um, as it relates to sexual trauma. But we never really hear the discussion about sexual trauma, sexual abuse, and just pedophilia in our community as it relates to young men. We don't really talk about our stress a lot, how a lot of young men are sexually molested, a lot of young men are touched, a lot of young men are forced into sexual situations with older women, and how it's unfortunately, it seems like it's normalized when it comes to young men and sex. It seems like no matter the age, there's no young age or there's no wrong age for a man to be, or for a young boy actually, to be sexually active. And we know that sexual, sexual encounters, no matter what the gender is, if it's not at an appropriate age, it affects you. So why does it seem like it's normalized for young boys um, to have sexual encounters? It seems like, oh, you, you're doing something sexual with the older girl, you know, it seems like you get encouraged or you get a pound from your friends or it's a good thing. Right. Um, whereas the young girls, we want to protect them, we want to hold on to them. Why don't we have that same protection mechanism in place for our boys? Anybody? <laughs> Society. Society? <laughs> Society has, uh, you know, kind of pushed uh, boys to be aggressive, be aggressors, and uh, mm. you know, if uh, you're able to get with the young lady, uh, you know, you're kind of looked at as stepping into your manhood, you know, so that's what is kind of deemed, uh, not appropriate, but, you know, it's kind of been deemed as, as that. <clears throat> I, would, I would go a step further and say um, more than just society, but specifically within the, within the black community. We have this, what I've observed, this lineage and this legacy of older black men inducting young black men and oftentimes boys into the sexual world. Um, whether it be um, engaging a prostitute on behalf of this young, young boy or um, taking this young boy to have his first sexual experience with a woman that you may know who's willing or who's expressed interest. Um, that I understand that yes, Masculinity is defined by sexual prowess, but it seems like within our community, there's a specific push for young boys to have sexual experiences, and if they do and when they do, it's just like, oh, that's great, fantastic, you should love that, you should be happy about that, go out and try to do it again. Hmm. Okay, well, how do you think that these experiences affect these young boys, and how do they spill over into our community? I mean, obviously, a lot of times it doesn't seem like it's very popular for young men to just come out and be like, yo, man, I was molested, or these things happened to me, or somebody kissed me inappropriately, somebody touched me inappropriately. Um, it's just not, these spaces are not comfortable. So a lot of times, a lot of these young men, they grow up and they carry these things. They never really get a chance to tell anybody. And then, as you talked about in our community, mental health and therapy is not really as popular. It's becoming more normal, thankfully, but coming through and commonly is not as popular so it's like they really don't get a chance to express and get off their chest so how does that affect our community like how does that end up coming out how do we see that play out in our community relationships <laughs> well <laughs> it's, it's... dating <laughs> parenting <laughs> it's basically a lack of emotional maturity uh, a lack of emotional maturity a lack of emotional maturity there you go um i would definitely say that um I can count on one hand with half the fingers missing the number of black men who I have personally dated who did not have a sexual experience before the age of 10. And, wow. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and which was 10? 10. 10 <laughs> before the age of wow. 10. Um, and it was mind blowing. Can to any me. of the men in here confirm that? Like, what the hell? Is that true? Was yeah, it? I think my first sexual experience was like when I was like five. That's a baby. It wasn't sex. It was just like, it was just like kissing and feeling around and hopping around and stuff like that. And it was with someone that was older. No, it was just someone same age. Okay. 
What about you? Uh, elementary. <laughs> That's before years. 10. Yeah, but you know, like humping around, it wasn't really like no type of penetration or anything. No, yeah, no, not penetration. Were you yeah. talking about just any type of sexual anything? Yeah, I definitely had dated a man who told me that his first sexual experience was um, at the age of four. And um, he was at his grandparents' house. Um, and all the kids were in the bed, as you do when you go to Big Mama's house. And he said he had an older cousin who had had some kind of sexual experience herself. And so when they would all lay in the bed together, she would take his hand and put it inside of her pants. Mm. And she would use his hand to touch herself. And he said, I don't, he said, I, what I remember the most is that I was a child, my skin was really sensitive. And I remember that the feeling of her pubic hairs hurt. Like it was painful to me, but there was, you know, but that was just what was happening. And um, later went on to have like a, a number of sexual experiences with older women that I thought were completely inappropriate. Um, but wow. I think the, the thing that's most bothersome to me is that society already looks at our boys as though they're grown men. Right. They get treated as though they're grown men. They're right. penalized as though they're grown men. Correct. It's extremely, extremely unfair and a disservice to our boys for us as their protectors and guardians to look at them as though they're grown men just because they hit that growth spurt. Right. Just because they, they may have smarted off at the mouth, now we think that they're able to handle adult situations. Right. It's not true and it's not fair and it's not something that we should encourage or participate in. So how can we make it more normalized for us to encourage young men to, to open up? I mean, obviously we're talking about dealing with um, generations of trauma, right? Generations of dealing with white supremacy, systemic things that have affected our influence, our community, and put these things in place for us to have these, uh, 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 these traumas. But how do we encourage, or how, how can we begin to do the work? Our guests would say, what would be the solution to this? Right? Because we know that obviously we always want to encourage people to create that avenue where people can, you know, come and tell, speak, and speak up. But we know that it's not always that easy, right? Because a lot of times children, when it's happening to you, you blame yourself, you know, you try to rationalize it. And then we can't even, that's a whole different things where parents, a lot of times I've heard it and it breaks my heart where a lot of children would tell their parents and the parents don't even believe the child right. or they blame the child. You know, so it's just like, wow, like when you're dealing with all of these different challenges, what are some ways that we can begin to move towards some solutions right. to where we can, you know, I guess move it in a different direction. Definitely being more open, having open dialogues like this. Yes. Uh, therapy, you know, definitely, definitely. therapy. Definitely. Because a lot of times it's other kids doing this. Even when I think about situations in elementary school and I'm thinking of other things like the young ladies were the aggressors. When we were young, the young ladies were the aggressors. Mm -hmm. Older young ladies, babysitters, stuff like that. And they were maybe 16, you know, 15, 16. We might be 10, 11. Um, but open dialogue, talking with kids because, uh, I mean, just our culture, just highly sexualized. The music we listen to, Facts. what we see, Facts. and and we just normalize a, a sexual culture. Yes. You know, it's like it's normal. When we say something about it, it's like, oh, you hate and let them do that thing. Nah, this isn't. This isn't. This isn't normal. It's yes. not cool. You know. So I definitely think it needs to be a lot of conversation and all. <clears throat> excuse me, open dialogue about it. Yeah, I don't think that we can. Um, we can. You should never put the responsibility of of taking control of the situation or remedying the situation on a child because it's not their responsibility. Absolutely. It's the responsibility of the of adult the, in the yes, child's absolutely. life That's right. to protect that child and to um, help that child and to provide a safe environment for the child. So I think that yes we should encourage open dialogue but I think that we should um, encourage a dialogue amongst ourselves as adults sure. to, to have the understanding that children First off, that a child is aged 0 to 18, mm -hmm. children, right. 
no matter how big they are, no matter how strong they are, whatever, children should not be put in sexual situations. Yes. And it should be a general agreement. It should be an open discussion. Hey, we shouldn't put these kids in those sexual situations. Yes. Right. I don't care if it's if, if it's your young blood or if this girl is fast or whatever. Yes. Children should not be put in sexual situations. Right. And, and even if even if even if they, they doing this or that and they're indoctrinated or whatever, children often try to do things that are not good for them. Hmm. Which is why they have parents, parents adults, <laughs> and guardians right. to stop children <laughs> from doing things that are going to harm them, Facts. that are going to cause long-term damage. Right. So I think, uh, yes, we should encourage open dialogue with children, but mm -hmm. even before that, we should have come to a mutual understanding within our community right. that we're not about this. Mm -hmm. That is a child. I don't care if that boy is six foot two. That is a child. Mm -hmm. You don't take him over there. You don't touch him like that. You don't be joking around like that. You That's don't right. have let your friends joke about how fine and handsome he's getting and what uh. you can do and all of that, this, that, and the other. <laughs> we don't do that because that is a child. Yes. Exactly. And if we want to have healthy adults, then we need to protect and shepherd our children through a healthy childhood. Right. One thing that I learned dealing with um, child psychology and, and um, having to study to learn how to, uh, to spot abused children, one thing that I learned is that when someone experiences trauma, when they're sexually abused, they become emotionally stunted at the age that they were sexually abused. Right. So if you watch these interviews with pedophiles who talk, who like, who have molested numbers of children, abused numbers of children, oftentimes they will tell you, well, I thought this child was my friend. Mm -hmm. I thought that they loved me. I thought that we were both doing something that we wanted to do. Why? Because they see themselves as a peer of the child. Mm -hmm. Because emotionally, they're still at that same age. So if you have a young girl who was molested at age 12, 10, 9, and she grows up to be 16 or 17 or whatever, and she sees a 9-year-old boy who looks, who, who's appealing to her, it's because emotionally she's still at that age. Mm -hmm. So now you've got these, you've got hurt people, hurting people, hurting people, hurting people, and it's a vicious cycle. But again, it's the responsibility of the adults to stop this behavior. And where does it start? Well, is it, it's a little surprise that if you take a young boy and you introduce him to sex at a very young age, and then you tell him whatever feelings or emotions he has surrounding that situation, whether he liked it or not, that it was a good thing, then you're going to affect his sexual relationships moving forward. Mm -hmm. He's going to not care about whether the person he's engaging with likes it or not or thinks it a good, it's a good thing mm -hmm. because this is just what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a practice built up from young of suppressing his emotions, of suppressing his, of not suppressing his physical desires, of, the, of making it only about physical gratification and not having a connection with this person because that's his first encounter and it was never addressed. Mm -hmm. So we can't then go into adult society and look at the black man and female relationships and be like, oh, this is so messed up. Black men is out here dogging women out and whoopie whoop to Ray without really addressing the fact that these children were not protected by the people in their life who were put there to do that, oftentimes their mothers. Mm -hmm. So we can't just point the finger at men or women. It's right. us as a community. We have to come together and address these issues. Otherwise, it's just going to be what it is.